Oh, I'm first grade and seven. Don't forget. <laughs> Don't forget your seven. And no, second grade. Your yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Now he's a second grade. Technically, <laughs> technically I'm second grade because you finished first. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Ah, turn it off. Okay. There we go. Sorry. No wonder it was off. Okay. There we go. It's pretty spicy, so I need to probably watch myself there because my mouth likes the spices, but my stomach doesn't. And then you're going to start flipping it ever so gently so you don't flip rice everywhere, which I do usually end up with some rice all around, but I try my best. Hi guys, this is Shanti Nair from the Dr. Yam Project. Today we're talking about leftovers. In my house, I don't know, leftovers are awesome. A lot of people have a bad feeling about leftovers and their family doesn't want to eat leftovers. I call leftover management meal planning. So um, when I'm figuring out what I'm going to make for the week, I know that I'm going to have certain things left over or if I batch cook, I know I'll have some things that I can turn into something different. So that's really the key to leftover management. Taking what you've got and putting a little extra special spin on it so it feels new. So I was excited because I called for the team, I called for fried rice to be my leftover management demo. I love to, when I'm cooking for a stir fry, I'll make extra rice knowing that I'll have some that'll hang out in the fridge that I can turn into fried rice another day that week. So that's the thing about fried rice. You want to have leftover rice. So even if you've ordered takeout that week and you have those little white cartons and you got a couple, two or three little white cartons left of rice, you know how they can be kind of eh, not that awesome heat it up in the microwave. A little crusty, a little crunchy. Um, that's the kind of rice you need for fried rice. The other thing I have, I'm ashamed to say, I get really excited at the farmer market, and these are my onions from two weeks ago that I found in the back of the fridge. So you can see there's like some really, really floppy ends on here. What I did with these guys is I filled the sink with cold water and let them hang out in there and it sort of revived some of this green. I'm going to cut off the top part and put that to compost, but most of these are fine. They are going to be perfect for this fried rice. So these will be my onions, but you could use any kind of onion that you have. You could use a red onion, you could use a Vidalia onion, you could use a white onion, you could use a yellow onion, but I'm going to use these. Uh, these scallions so they don't go to waste. The other thing that you can do, these are kind of the basics that you need. You need some onion, you need some garlic. This is about four cloves of garlic. So to really get a lot of flavor in this fried rice, you want to have garlic and onion. If you have ginger, great. If you want to use it, that's fine, but it's totally not necessary. The sauce I wanted to tell you about, I just use uh, Dr. Yum's stir fry sauce. Three parts soy to one part water to one part vinegar and then for the booster you want to use sesame oil this is key for a really yummy fried rice is sesame oil so I put one part of sesame oil in this and then I'll adjust it to taste at, and look sometimes I'll shake in some more soy if I think the rice needs it because with this leftover recipe there isn't a whole lot of measuring really it's sort of like what do you have left how much are you gonna make and it could be a bigger portion depending on how much rice you have left. All right, so I'm just gonna sort of take care of these um, these scallions and get some of the, so I'll get the very ends off of course, and then I'll look at the greens. The thing about these is they're still gonna taste just fine. So you really don't need to get rid of that much of them. You know, once the greens start to get a little floppy like this, they're not gonna taste great on a, raw on a salad or as a fresh topper but cooked just fine so i'm just going to cut off this very top that looks a little more warm and the rest i'm going to use not bad for two week old farmer market scallions that's going to be the perfect amount of onion for this uh, fried rice that we're going to do so we're going to shift over to the stove area and I'll show you what we got going there. This is kind of how leftovers roll in our house. Um, like I told you, I made an extra big batch of rice, so I have this rice. You want the rice that's been refrigerated because then the starches all settle into the rice. That's what makes a good fried rice. So 
Um, it needs to be leftover rice. And then um, we like to have vegetables at every meal. So um, I really love to have my freezer full of uh, different kinds of vegetables that I can heat in the microwave in a minute. Um, those vegetables tend to not be as awesome the second day when you just want to reheat them in the microwave after they've already been cooked in the microwave. So what I do is the leftover um, microwave style veggies from the freezer, I just save them and they actually really make this fried rice awesome. Mine is just going to be a veggie fried rice, but you could also, if you had some rotisserie chicken left, you could um, throw that into the rice and make a chicken fried rice. Um, really any kind of meat that you have left that you want to add to your fried rice you can. The other great thing to do is to add egg to your fried rice. So um, you can just make a little well in the middle, scramble up that egg and have it go throughout the fried rice. But I'm just going to do a veggie fried rice and show you how it goes. Today I'm going to make this in, I learned this from Sarah. Hi Sarah. Um, I learned this from Sarah. Make the fried rice in your cast iron skillet if you have one. It really provides a big surface for your rice to hang out on and each, all the edges get that good crisp to it. So I'm gonna put some coconut oil in it and get the um, onions and garlic going first. So for this fried rice, you don't really have to worry about measurements too much. Just sort of go with what you have, what you like, and um, taste as you go and add more uh, flavorings if you want. If you wanted to make it spicy, you could put some pepper flakes, uh, or anything like that. The other thing you can do is once you have the fried rice made, whether it's a veggie fried rice or whether you add meat or eggs, um, you can also top it with yummify stuff like sesame seeds or cashews. All right, so we're gonna go in with those two week old farmer market scallions, which are gonna get a new life in this fried rice. Go ahead and get the garlic in there with it. So I hope on this video, you'll tell us how you are managing your leftovers at your house. I know with us cooking so much more at home, sometimes it can feel overwhelming if you're you know, trying to cook a meal every night or at least every other night, and then sort of find a way to refresh what you have left. It's, it's a, it's a, it is, it's a management issue where we have to look at the fridge and go, oh my goodness, I have some of this, some of that, what can I do? Okay, so once you get your rice in here, um, because it's, you know, hung out in the fridge, it's gonna be stuck together. So break it up. When you get it in here, you don't want a big chunk of rice. You wanna get to break it up. Break it up and spread it out. And then kinda let it hang out. So you can already see that the onions and garlic are getting a little toasty brown. So I'm gonna keep moving it because you don't want anything to burn on the bottom. But once you redistribute, let it hang out for a minute and then flip again. I'm on a big burner and I'm on one of my more powerful burners. So it's, this burner goes up to 10. I have it on about six. And you may need to adjust your heat depending on what's going on. This rice is starting to look and smell really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and sauce it and let that start to incorporate into the rice. And then we can get an idea when we look at it, if the color looks right, you can also get a little tasting spoon and see how that is. But this has my soy sauce, water, rice vinegar, and sesame oil is right in here. Actually looks great. The color looks good. The smell smells amazing. Um, I'm getting ready to throw these veggies in here. I love peas and fried rice. That's pretty much my favorite part of fried rice. And this will make a perfect meal in itself or a great side to anything you've got going. See you next time. Bye. We tend to have a lot of leftovers from the night before or um, you know, that week. Um, so we're going to talk about what I do with our leftovers at the Mediterranean household is we actually make quesadillas. That's one of our favorite things to do. And we usually have it for lunch and sometimes we have it for dinner. Oh, I forgot. Here's my helper.
Rika. <laughs> so she is actually going to be the quesadilla maker today. What I have is the leftover that I have that I'm going to use is I have actually some salmon, some baked salmon. I baked some salmon over the weekend and we had leftovers. And what I did was I ended up um, shredding the salmon and I just put it in the microwave and warmed it up. As you can see, um, right here. And then we are going to fill our quesadilla with some veggies. We have some spinach here. Um, if you, any veggies you want, you can use, and you can actually use any protein. So you don't have to obviously use salmon. You can use your, if you have leftover grilled chicken, if you have grilled, if you have hamburgers that are leftover, you can shred it and put it in the quesadilla. Anything you want, or it even can be, you can put steak in it. Yes, you can even put steak, or you can just make it vegetarian and put beans or just veggies and cheese, okay? So here we go. So we have, we're gonna make our quesadilla with um, tortillas and we have flour tortilla right here. And Rekha's gonna go ahead and put some butter. That's pretty good, Rekha. And we're gonna pop the tortilla in and then we're gonna go ahead and put our fillings in next. Rekha's gonna put the salmon. Mm -hmm. Good, she's getting comfortable now. She can put the salmon. That's good, Rekha. That you can put a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Well, we need more salmon. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Yeah, I'll get some more salmon. And she's going to put some cheese, some um, spinach in there, and I'll get you some more cheese, Rekha. I love extra cheese on all of my um, quesadillas because I like cheese more than anybody in this house. Okay, that's good. And we've got to put tons of cheese in there. Because it's what it makes it stick. We can put a little bit more just on the side so that it'll I'll, stick. I can, we can flatten them down mm -hmm. a little bit. Now, um, I like to put a little bit, probably, you know, what we call in the Yum Project, some Yumifiers. And this is the, I use the chili garlic I'm um, not, sauce. I don't like to have that one on mine because i just getting used to having hot sauce. Okay. Oh, we don't put it on there, baby. Yeah, maybe to flatten it. No, you have to kind of put the other one on there. Okay, there we go. We're going to put that one on there and then we're going to flip it. Hold on, it's Can hot. I hold it? Yeah, hold on. Hold on, it's hot. So this bottom has to cook. So we're waiting for the bottom tortilla to cook up a little bit. I had this and on And this low. recipe is really fast, just simple. Just fast and simple. And you can add any filling you want. Well, I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna have Rekha put some butter on there split, so when we flip it, mm -hmm. I've made some soups and salads by myself, um, just with a little help on turning the stove on. With my salads, I've been really doing doing them more than I've been doing my soups. Where do you get your salad ideas from? The Dr. Yum Project. Oh. And my soups are from notes, and then I just make my own uh, soup from notes, so then I can like be creative to myself. Do, do you like to cook? How does that look? It still needs to get a little bit more. Okay. Fun. So, do you like to cook? I like to cook, but not like, I like to like- Make your make, own stuff. I like to make things and then just put different ingredients to see what comes, like what it will taste like. Oh yeah, that's fun. Cause right? I like to like see- Ooh, like, look at how beautiful that looks. It right. sort of looks like Kodensky's, um artwork. Oh wow, yeah. You like to make art with food? Is that what yeah. you're saying? Oh, you're so- such a foodie, Rekha. <laughs> okay. So we're going to need another plate, Ray. Uh, Can you grab another there. plate? Get, grab a, one of the big plates there. Okay. And we're going to pop that on here. Okie dokie. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that looks. And then we can cut it up. Um, we just need one more, right? Um, yep. We can cut it up with some scissors and it's just really yummy. I but think we need more salmon, Mama. Yes, I, I'll get you some more salmon. But this is mine that I already made and it's just, it's great. 
I'm gonna have some. Mmm, very good. Bye guys, enjoy. Hey, it's Dr. Yum, and I wanted to tell you about one of my favorite ways to use leftovers, which is yum bowls. So a yum bowl is basically a big bowl of your favorite things that tend to work well together, but also can be a little bit random. So um, it's Friday and I just saw a bunch of well children in the morning and I came home to drop off my dog Frida and say hi to my kids and eat a quick lunch. And so I have a goal of kind of figuring out what I can use that's left over from the week that I can put into my yum bowl. So I'm gonna start with a bowl. We actually went and bought some new bowls because we use yum bowls so much and these bowls are you know, generously sized so we can pile on all the things that we love to make a great yum bowl. So you wanna start with um, a grain and a green and depending on what you're in the mood for, you might do a grain heavy bowl or a green heavy bowl. So I'm gonna do a green heavy bowl because I feel like I need some greens today and I have a lot of spinach. And then I noticed that I have some cilantro um, that still looks pretty fresh. So I'm gonna throw some cilantro in there too. My bowl is gonna be kind of a Mexican style bowl because that's what I have. Um, but your bowl can really take on whatever kind of flavors um, that you like or that you have. I noticed I have some yellow rice and some beans left over from yum bowls we had earlier in the week. And so I warmed up some of these and I'm just gonna put these in. So the, um, the grain is nice because it will keep you a little bit full and give you some energy. You can, if you have quinoa, you can put quinoa in, you can do brown rice. Um, and then for my protein, I'm using the beans. And then you can just start layering on other things that you have. Often we may have some leftover fresh veggies or uh, roasted veggies, um, so you can put those on. I noticed that I have this awesome salsa verde from these enchiladas that we made earlier in the week. So um, these were actually made with fresh tomatillos. And we had so much salsa verde, um, from when my son Zane made this recipe. So I threw these into a jar. And then I'm gonna just start layering other things on, like whatever I have. So this is a, um, like a Mexican style, um, the way that I've cooked the beans. So I can use a little bit of cheese. Um, I might put a little bit of sour cream on there too. I might need a hand on this, thank you, um, <laughs> on the cheese. So, and then I always have a little bit of um, this cilantro salad dressing. It's from Trader Joe's. It's really awesome for yum bowls because um, the, of the flavors, they work really nicely with my Mexican yum bowl. So I'll probably use a little bit of that. Um, I'll do a squirt of sour cream. So it's really just like basically look at what's going on in your fridge and empty it into one delicious Bowl. And then what really makes this nice is um, to use something crunchy. It kind of just gives it that extra yumify, um, as we like to call it at the Dr. Yum Project. So um, pumpkin seeds are really nice. I found these pistachios, so I'm gonna use those. And then um, I had a couple of these corn tortilla chips. So I'm gonna break a couple of those into my yum bowl. And then I might add a little extra dressing and I am good to go. So yum bowls at my house are always a hit and they are a great way to empty out the leftovers in your fridge. Hey everybody, it's Sarah. And for my leftover recipe, it's not really a recipe as much as it is kind of like a style of meal. So one thing that I could think can be really good for leftover meats is doing some sort of cold salad. So I have some leftover chicken here. I roasted a chicken earlier in the week and we ate the dark meat as part of our meal, but I saved the white meat and we're gonna be using that in the cold salad today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and slice this up because um, I just cut the chicken breasts right off of the bones um, and stored them in the fridge like this. But now I'm gonna cut them up into little bite-sized pieces for my salad. And for this type of salad, there's really, there's a lot of different ways you can do it and it just depends on what you like. So um, it's gonna depend on 
what kind of starch you want to use, what kind of veggies you want to use, what kind of flavor combos you want to use, um, and on what you have. So this style of meal is really customizable depending on what your preferences are or just what you have hanging around. So I've got my chicken cut now, so let's go ahead and add this to the bowl I have started here. And I have a few different things in this bowl. Um, I have some sliced celery, I have some carrot up here at the front, and in the back I have some daikon radish. Uh, but again, depending on what types of other mix-ins you want to do for a cold salad like this, uh, you can really do a lot of different types of vegetables. Maybe you have some leftover roasted veggies from another meal. Anything like that you can put in there. Uh, fresh herbs are another thing you could include if you have parsley or cilantro um, or you know, really a lot of herbs. Basil. It's all, again, just going to depend on what you have and how all of those flavors are going to go together. And actually, I'll come into the camera so you can get a little close-up look. So this is everything we have in here. Now, as far as meats, you could do other kinds of meats too. Let me move back a little bit. You could do other kinds of meats too. So again, this is about using your leftovers. So maybe you've done some grilling and you have a little bit of the grilled stuff left over. It's not like enough for everyone to have, have it again as leftovers, but you can chop it up and incorporate it into a salad like this, whether it's steak or shrimp or something else entirely, um, you can repurpose it in this way. Now with this type of salad, the other thing you want is some kind of noodle um, or other starch. So I have some lo mein noodles here that I have cooked and I ran them under cold water so they'd be cold because this is a cold salad. But you also might have like a soba noodle or a rice noodle or um, maybe ramen noodles or some type of pasta, either a noodle shape or some other type of pasta shape. You could also use quinoa. Um, I'm going to throw these in. Well, actually, let's mix this up first because this is kind of like, this bowl could stand to be a little bigger, I guess I should say. We don't have a ton of room for mixing, so I'm going to do a first kind of pass here like this and get a little start on our mix. We're losing a few carrots on the side, but that's okay. We'll grab them in a second. All right, now I'm going to put in my noodles. And we'll do another little toss and get all of these things incorporated. And the other thing about this style of um, you know using your leftovers is you can kind of make as much as you need or as much as you have. So depending on how many people you're making food for and just what you have left over that you need to use up, uh, you that's gonna all affect you know the the total amount that you're making. All right, so we've at least got a start on getting that incorporated. We don't want the noodles to break up too much, so we're you know we got to be gentle. But we'll go ahead and add on our sauce and give it a final pass. So I have a peanut sauce that I made here, but again, the type of sauce you use is gonna depend on what you have and what other you know, what's going to go together well with the other things you have going on. So you might do like a creamy style, like mayonnaise or yogurt sauce. Um, maybe you're going to do like a lemon juice olive oil situation or some other sort of vinegar or other acid um, and olive oil. Maybe lime would go really well with what you're doing, or maybe that's just what you have. Uh, again, you're going to adjust it based on what you like and what you have around. So now everything's all mixed up and you can see this is what mine looks like and I will probably top it with some sriracha when I go ahead to eat it. Uh, but the nice thing about this style of recipe or cooking as well is that this could be something that you make specifically for a meal. So maybe you're kind of thinking, okay, I've got these little things and this is what we're going to have for dinner tomorrow or in a couple days or you can make it as something that hangs out in the fridge to be there when you need it. So something that you can pull out for lunches or something you can pull out on a night when you don't feel like cooking or something that people in your house can eat on throughout the week. But either way, it's gonna take those leftovers that you had and kind of reimagine them and make something new and delicious from them. Hi everybody, it's Laura Vizion from the Dr. Young Project here today uh, once again with my favorite kitchen assistant, me. Who are you? Raka. So we're going to talk about managing leftovers. And one of the things that I like to make with leftover pasta is a frittata. pasta... Frittata. Frittata. Yeah. Yeah. It's where, you, it's where you get your leftovers and then mix it with eggs. My, my mom uses crawl eggs, but you can use as many as you want, depending on how much people you have in your family. I learned this little trick from um, my sister-in-law, Nikki, who makes the best frittata um, that I've ever had. So we'll 
try and do uh, one that's as yummy as hers, but it's so easy. And I'm going to use this is leftover pasta. So this is actually a in its fourth life. I made a pot of um, Nettie's marinara, which is on Dr. Young's website, and we had it for dinner the night I made it with spaghetti. Then I added ground meat to it and made a simple skillet lasagna. It's like a cheater where you just layer ravioli with meat sauce and cheese. So I did that. Then with, I had leftover meat sauce after that, and I made a power pasta using the Dr. Young Mulematic. And that is what this is. So this is leftover power pasta, and it's the meat sauce infused with tons of veggies over spaghetti. And this is how much we had left over, um, and it's just the right amount to make a frittata. So we're just gonna take our sauced pasta, any shape works, any sauce works, literally anything, pesto, anything, any power pasta you might make with the Mulematic, you could turn into a frittata. And so, I don't know, the first time I saw this done, I thought it seemed kind of weird that tomato yeah. saucy spaghetti mixed with egg would turn into a delicious um, meal. So I like to crack an egg first into a, a bowl. small bowl. And then if um and then if you see any eggshells, you get a spoon and scoop them out and then you dump that again. Right. That way you're not fishing a shell or maybe a bad egg out of your integrated pasta. So this is gonna take us some time, but we're gonna add ultimately at least 10 eggs into this. Here, put those in here. Ah. Yeah, and then, great, so we'll use this and we'll dump into here. Okay, last egg going in. Rock is already it. washing up because we've got a lot of egg goo on us. We ended up using 12 eggs for you know, a container this size. What is this? Like a quart. And now, you just beat your eggs like you're making regular old scrambled eggs. But you're just going to beat them in to... <laughs> it's really ugly looking. But I promise it tastes good. So that's about what it should look like. See how it's pretty soupy? You want to have plenty of egg for this, roughly this consistency. And now, you've cleaner your hands. Crack some pepper. Okay. At this point, it's also yummy to add um, fresh herbs if you have them. That's good. And then do a scoop of salt. Um, and I just have I'm a going, little bit of fresh thyme and a little bit of fresh basil from our garden. I'm going to put some more peppercorns in yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. It's a little Did you add salt? Uh, yeah. And then the next step, if we're following me over to the stove, is we cook this. So a medium heat. This is a 12-inch non-stick skillet. You don't have to use a 12-inch skillet, but keeping in mind that I'm feeding six and I have a dozen eggs in my frittata. Okay, you can hear a sizzle. That's a good sign. Now... The frittata has kind of a two-phase cooking process. It's going to cook in this pan, and the bottom will cook in this pan. And I move it around for a while. You see how the sides are beginning to cook? I pull those almost like I'm making scrambled eggs. And when the bottom is set, I have my oven set to 425. And once I have the bottom set in the pan, um, I will bake it off in the oven to cook the top. Uh, you could broil it if it's almost fully cooked. Um, and you could also flip it. That's very fancy, and uh, I'm not that good at the flip. So my method is cook the bottom on the stove top and cook the top in the oven. So once you get the frittata looking about like this. See how it's getting fairly dry. The egg has largely cooked and it's somewhat set. At this point, I stop moving it around. And I'm just gonna let the bottom cook uh, and brown. It probably would be a good idea to cover this and that would accelerate the top cooking as well. So I will do that. 
And then once I'm able to lift this a little bit and it'll hold together as I lift and peek under and see brown, that's when I'm just gonna finish it off in the oven. I'm gonna use the broiler. You know the broiler cooks from the top down, so that's gonna be ideal for this because we'll only have left finishing off the top. Okay, so let's see how we're doing in here. Okay, see? It's sort of springy, and when I get under it and lift, it's holding together, and you can see it's browned under there. So, this means it's ready for the oven. Rocco, will you carefully open the oven for mom? I'm turning off the burner. What's that one? This oven right here, please. Okay. <laughs> Here comes the frittata. So the broiler's on, but I have the rack not at the tippy top. And this will get hot, so we'll need to use gloves. But there it goes, and it'll sit in there for a minute or two minutes, not that long. So while we wait, Rocco, I'm wondering, um, what is your favorite thing that we do with leftovers? Well, if we have black beans, mm -hmm. we, you can make vegetarian chili. I mean, vegetarian nachos. Mm. Or if you have regular chili, you can make what? nachos, nice. chili nachos, mm -hmm. without vegetarian, though. Yeah, I do actually like to make nachos a, a meal. Um, it works. <laughs> we get all our food groups on there. Um, you know, a decently healthy um, tray of nachos might have a layer of beans on top of the chips, yep, some yep. cheese, um, some fresh veggies, corn, um, tomatoes, even um, finely diced zucchini, and then um, avocado. And that's a lot of food groups, and it's filling, and it's quick, and it's easy. Um, so that's another thing we do with leftovers, especially chili or, like he said, black beans, or any kind of bean, frankly. All right, let's check on it, bud. Yikes. Ready? It's gonna be hot. Okay, that is exactly what it should look like. Sizzling, there's some brown bits, and it's, you know, all gelled together. And I'm gonna bring it over to this um, cutting board. I'm gonna cut it for you guys. I would let it rest for a little bit longer, but I want you to see the way that it cuts. The first piece is always the hardest to get. <laughs> right, Rocco? Yep. It happens with a lot of fruits, but this is pretty good. So see, there it is. Lunch is served. Lunch is served. It's pretty hot. still too hot. I think it's going to be good. <laughs> See you all, everybody. Next video, Paco and Bye. I are going to enjoy our lunch.